Okay, so I'll record uh, this, uh, me explaining this to you, and then you can actually play this back at home on your own uh, telephone or your own uh, phone, sorry, or your own PC or whatever. I'll send it, the link to you by email, okay? Okay, so here we go then. So when may you overtake another vehicle on, on their left? Now, let's have a look at this. So basically what, what you're looking at is uh, a wee bit of road and you've got a vehicle here. Okay, probably turning right, I would say, on this occasion. But let's see what they uh, what they want. So when may you overtake? So that means you're going to come up here. You understand that? Okay, Dylan, that's what they want you to do. Um, so basically what you've got to do is you've got to visualize yourself driving a car. And when when do you think yourself you could overtake someone on the left side? On the turn right? Yeah, when, when the vehicle in front is turning right is one occasion. But there's also a couple of other occasions, isn't there? Um, and this one and this particular one is a place actually where you, you'll end up going to in Larne at some point. And there's a one-way street down there. And it goes like this. And you can turn left up here like that, or you can turn right like that. Have you seen that one before? It's like a T-junction. So the left lane here, that's for a vehicle that wants to turn left. The right lane, that's for vehicles that want to turn right. So if you've been told, or you know where you're going, then you must get into the correct lane for where you want to go on a one-way street. Does that make sense okay? Yeah. So if you've been told you're turning right at the end, you get into the right lane. And if you've been told you're turning left at the end, you get into the left lane. Now, because of the situation, that means that you can actually overtake on both sides. In other words, the left vehicle, if it's traveling faster, um, can overtake the right vehicle. And that's, that's something that you don't normally do on a normal road, is it? So that's why they've mentioned it here. Can you overtake on the left in a one-way street? Yes, you can. You can also overtake on the left when a vehicle in front of you is turning right. And you can see that happening here, you see? See, this vehicle wants to turn in here and you're coming up this way and there's enough room here you, you can overtake that vehicle on the left, can't you? Yeah. Okay, let's have a look at the uh, one more occasion that sometimes comes up. Do you have you any idea when it is, where, where you can overtake it on the left? There's one more occasion. Have you any idea? Hmm? No, no. I'll give you a, I'll, I'll give you a rough clue now. I'll draw, I'll draw a dual carriage, right? This is one side of the dual carriage, right? All right. And you've got vehicles heading from Carrick Fergus up to Green Island on the dual car and you've got troopers laying over here somewhere and they're they're stuck in a traffic jam because they're heading to work probably in the morning time. You might have been in that traffic jam before now. In the middle lane. <laughs> there, there's, both lanes are full of traffic, but here's what happens sometimes. The traffic in the left lane is moving faster than the traffic in the right lane. So what are they actually doing then if they're moving faster in the left lane? Overtaken. They're overtaken, aren't they? Mm -hmm. They don't. They don't mean to overtake, but guess what? It's it's happening, and they just have to do it. They have to go with the traffic flow. So that's why the law allows you to overtake in this situation when on a dual carriageway, traveling in queues. And this is a very popular question for people to get wrong because the, there's three times you can overtake on the left. So take note of them for me. Now, like I say, you'll have this video. I'll send you a link. I'll use YouTube to do that. I'll send you a link for it so you can go onto it and uh, you can study it. And it'll help you train for your, your theory test because these are questions that you're, you're getting wrong. So it'll help you a lot. Now you take your time and take some notes. I'll just move on to have a, wee, a look at the next question.
trying to draw a box junction, by the way. It doesn't look great, by the <laughs> I'm trying to draw it with a mouse, so it'll do, it'll do the job. Okay, so a box junction. You've seen these on the road. You know what they look like, yeah? There are yellow, yellow stripes on them. They're not red. Yeah, they're yellow. These uh, stripes here are yellow stripes. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it looks like a potato waffle. <laughs> well, sometimes call it that, you know, for a memory trigger. <laughs> it's a potato waffle there. Eh? But anyway, so as you come up to it, um, it's asked you a question here. You want to turn right at the at this box junction. So that means you want to go from here. I'll just do the road markers right so you can see. So you want to go from here and you want to go all the way around there. Okay, you happy with that? That's what the question said. You want to turn right at a box junction. Did you know what a box junction was, Dylan? Is that is that confusion? No, I know. Right? No, you know I know what, what it is. You know what it is. Okay, my man. All right. So what should you do if there's traffic coming towards you? That's what oncoming means. So oncoming traffic means traffic coming comes this way. So you got you got a truck a car coming this way. And maybe you've got uh, lots of traffic coming this way. So you're allowed to go in the middle here and wait. You're allowed to go in here and wait. To, because you're going to turn right. Now, I think what you were thinking of is, you were thinking about one of the questions that comes up. It says, you should not enter a box junction unless your exit from it is clear. So in other words, if there was a pile of traffic here, right? And you know you can't turn because of this traffic, then you are you would be right to stay here. That's what you were probably thinking about. But if there's no traffic here, your exit's clear. So you can come in and wait here in this position. Does that make sense okay? Yeah. Because a normal, a normal junction looks like that, right? And if you're here and you want to turn into there, you normally have to wait the traffic comes past you before you can turn. Is that not correct? Yeah. Now, just because this is a box junction, in other words, it's got the yellow stripes on it, it means that you're not allowed to stop on this yellow markings norm normally. But they allow you to stop on them when you're turning right because it's quite a dangerous maneuver to turn right. And if you if you waited a way back, if you waited a way back here, for example, and you were trying to, to gauge the speed of cars coming towards you, that would be quite difficult to do, wouldn't it? Because you're too far away from, from a way back here. So they allow you to come into the box junction when you're not normally allowed to, to wait here to make it easier for you to turn right. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. The only thing that you just have to remember with this, because it's a really difficult question, by the way, so that's why it's, you know, it's a head scratcher. Just try to remember this. If they try to trick you a little bit here by saying your exit from the box junction is not, the, the exit from the road is not clear. In other words, there's traffic here. Well, you still would not be allowed to come into the middle because your exit's not clear. All right? So you got to watch that they don't try to trick you with that one. Yeah. Let's have a look at the next one now. So uh, a night, oh, right, we've got a, a someone with a red light out for a walk. <laughs> if you see one of these, take a photograph of them and send me it, would you? Because I've never seen one, ever. <laughs> but it's what you're meant to do. If you're out for an organized walk, you're meant to have a red light. Would you believe? And some reflective clothing, you know, like a one of those fluorescent jackets on you. Yeah. So you were thinking it was somebody slowing traffic down or something, were you? Was that what you were thinking? They were using a red light to slow traffic down or something? Maybe a slow moving vehicle. Uh-huh. Uh okay. Uh, I see what you mean. Yeah. So just what, what you were looking for here, but there's a couple of key words. Um, at night, when, what does it mean if you see a pedestrian? Now, yeah. when, when they use a, the word pedestrian, the word pedestrian basically means someone who's walking on the road. Someone who's using the road, and they're walking on. Maybe there's no, um, maybe they've got no footpath. So they, they use the word pedestrian to, to to try to let you know that you've got someone who's going to be on your road, probably. 
You know, pedestrians can be on the footpath as well, of course, but they've said quite clearly it's a pedestrian so that you know it's someone walking, it's not someone in a machine, bicycle or whatever. And if that pedestrian, that person walking, pedestrian, someone walking, is wearing reflective uh, clothing and is also carrying a bright red light, well, that's an organized walk. That's how they're meant to go out for a walk um, in the countryside and whatever. So people see them coming. Now, it's one of the biggest problems you've got to watch in Northern Ireland because uh, the country roads are quite lethal, especially the left hand corners. You know. People go out for a walk and they take their life in their hands on the country roads. Touch me. I'll feed it. So this is your uh, your your sign, which has the uh, the blue sign. Yeah. What is it? What this one? What's this one about then? What does it mean? Must do. Yes, a must do thing. Definitely blue must do. So it's a cycle for starters. So it's got a cycle in it. So you kind of want to be looking in in these answers with something that has a cycle in it for sure. See. Now, the reason why it's not a contraflow, because we've talked about this one before, the contraflow sign is the one that has got arrows in it. You know, it's got an arrow in it. Once you see arrows, it means it's telling you that the vehicle's coming against, you know, it's coming towards you, against the normal flow of the traffic. But the word with flow means it's going with the flow of the traffic. So that's why there's no arrows in it. And that's a very quick way of recognizing what this sign means. First of all, you, you know that the question is going to have a bicycle in it. So that's that one. And you've got this one. You've got two possible answers. But this is blue must do. So you, you, could, you know then that it's saying, guess what? Cycles can come in here. So it's, it's not going to be a no. Because we know no's are O's. No's are O's, right? Know this, know that. Once you see a no, you say it, you know it's a no. <laughs> so that's the way that works. O means no. But blue must do. Bicycle must do, first of all. So that's how you, you can work this question out. Even if you didn't know the answer to it, you've got a very good chance of getting it right if you remember the very that very good memory trigger. Blue must do, and it's a cycle. So that's what you should have been looking for there, Dylan. All right? You need to be looking for that, looking for the bicycle, and then blue must do. It wasn't, it didn't mean it was a no. Okay, 10. When should you use the left hand lane of a motorway? Well, you've got uh, two lanes on a motorway normally, uh, maybe three, but let's just say, for example, uh, we've got two lanes. So, where should you normally drive on the motorway? So where should you normally drive the motorway? Here, as you see, we've got three lanes here, one, two, and three. So what lane should you be in? Okay, I'll give you a question, here we go. It's six o'clock in the morning, you're on your own. You wanna go 70 miles an hour because you've passed your driving test and you're in a hurry to get somewhere. What lane would you go into? What way we're going? Straight ahead, you're going straight ahead. One way system on a motorway, so you're going straight ahead. Okay, three. what's that? Two, maybe. Okay, this, the reason why I'm asking the question is because most people get this one wrong as well. If you're, if you're traveling at 70 miles an hour, it doesn't really make a big difference because uh, there's no one on the motorway, it's just you. So if you're on your own on the motorway and you have three lanes and you're doing 70 miles an hour, what lane should you be in? Two, I think. <laughs> See, everybody thinks that. Three, that? No, it's not three. <laughs> Everybody, yeah, no, this is it. This is this is the bit that's this is the brain teaser, right? Look, the, the question I'm I'm just sort of uh, trying to get you to think about it by giving you this little uh, 
task here, right? But what I'm trying to explain to you is if there's no one else on the motorway and you're on your own and you're doing 70 miles an hour, it means nothing. You should be in the left lane. Because guess what? The other two lanes are for overtaking. The middle lane is for overtaking and the right lane is for overtaking. So if there's no one on the motorway, you, you're not going to be overtaking anybody. So you just stick in the left lane. Does that make sense? Okay, now? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Frank. Yes, you go ahead, my man. You go ahead. <laughs> Still seems to be some of these signs. It's uh, giving you a bit of trouble, Dylan, isn't there? So I can see some of the signs are giving you a bit of trouble because this is the this is the same one as before. It's a some similar, isn't it? It's got a bus in it. So first of all, what are you looking for? Is something that tells you that you know it's got to do with a bus, maybe you know, but there's nothing there this time to can to help you that way. So that's not working. But we know that it's the blue sign, and it's we know it's to do with the control. Control flow system, isn't it? Yeah. Or the the flow system and the, the one-way system. So, so because you see the arrows, right? As soon as you see the arrows like this, you know it's going to be that word, contra flow. You see, and that's what they've said here. Look, where would you see a contra flow? That's a difficult question because of the way they've worded it. Contra just means against. Where would you see? a sign telling you something's coming against the normal flow of the traffic. Well, it has to be a one-way street because you're not expecting something to come towards you, you see. Because if you're in a one-way street, you're not expecting to see something coming towards you. So they have to put this sign up to say, guess what, be careful, something's going to come towards you here. And it's going to scare the bejesus out of you. <laughs> if you're driving down a one-way street and you see something coming towards you, you're going to take a heart attack, aren't you? Yeah. So that's why they have to put the sign up. And this sign just means, means contra flow, just means against the normal flow of traffic. And so that usually be one way streets to us, wouldn't it? Yes. So if you see a contra flow, it has to be a one way street. That's always going to be one way. That's one way street for sure. All righty. One way street. Just remember that. When you see contra flow, you only find a contra flow uh, sign like this on a one-way street because it's kind of telling you guess what be careful you're going to have something coming towards you that you're not expecting all righty and uh, you don't you if you're driving down a one-way street and all of a sudden the bus comes charging towards you you'd be like whoa so they put a sign up uh, uh, a little bit early for you to see guess what be careful because buses can come this way and you find that in like cities you know like a one-way system in a city yeah uh, you get that's happening so you yeah, tough question though. So that's like I say, it's the way they word the question. You've got to watch it. That's the it's the word that these questions can catch you. Out. I think you know that's that question, but it's just the way the worded it there. Okay, so here's bad here's the bad news for you. If a car skids, uh, it's normally the driver's fault. <laughs> we can blame the weather, of course, and the weather could could. The weather could be a reason, of course, because it could be icy or snow, okay? But in the world of motoring and driving, guess what? 
The insurance company doesn't think that. The insurance company says, you shouldn't have went out driving today. So it's your fault. Does that make sense? Why it's, why it's always the driver's fault? Yeah. Yeah, insurance companies love that, don't they? A tree, a tree falls on you because it's a windy day and it breaks your car and you're like, phone them up. Hey, excuse me, but guess what? Tree just fell on my head there. I was driving the car, right? And they'll go, yeah, that's bad luck, isn't it? They, they actually call it an act of God, would you believe, uh, somewhere along the line. They say, yeah, it can happen. It's an act of God, that sort of thing. What? <laughs> God just dropped a tree in my car? Be serious. <laughs> so, but anyway, they won't pay out. They won't pay out for stuff like that. Like if you drive through a Ford, you know, the, the water on the road, and you, you the water goes into your engine, and it breaks your engine. Oh, sure yeah, so. yeah, they don't pay for that either. That's another one. That's one of those other ones, that, you know, that comes under that system, you know. Bad luck, you should be driving. It was too it was too much water on the road. So yeah, basically in driving, um, everything's your fault. <laughs> if you have an accident because you're skidded, you, you, your fault. So just remember that for me, and uh, you'll you'll be able to answer all them questions to do with weather conditions. You know, even if, if you do get a question that says a tree dropped on your car, <laughs> you'll know it's your fault. You shouldn't have been out driving. Okay, anyway, here we go next. You're waiting to. The word emerge just means you, uh, you're waiting to come out. Emerge means come out. You you want to you're waiting you're waiting at a junction. You want to come out, but you can't see very well because there's parked cars. Now this is something that comes up in driving because you you get a good a bit of help sometimes from buildings so or houses. So this is you here, and you want to turn here. There's a big tree here, right? And you can't see anything. And there's a there's somebody coming down on their motorbike. But guess what? There's a big building over here and it's got a window and you can see the reflection of the motorbike in the window. See? Does that make sense? Yeah. So yeah, you can use buildings to have a little look to your past it and they can help you. So reflections of traffic in windows, houses or, you know, you know, if you're trying to come out of a, a wee tight road, yeah, you can see some stuff in people's windows and that can give you an idea. So this is uh, to do with wind. And so your which vehicles are likely to be affected by side wind? Now, what it means by affected is, you know, will the wind blow them around the place? Now, you have went for high-sided vehicles, but the reason why you get caught is because of the way the word of the question, right in the middle of it, as I read it, you could see now which vehicles are least. See? Least <laughs> trick question. I even read it too fast myself. That's only when I looked at it again, I realized which vehicles are least likely to be affected by sign winds. And believe it or not, the high sided wind one is the most affected by winds because it's got a big, big, massive side and the wind catches it. And motorcycles will be affected by wind because they're light and flimsy. And so will cyclists for the same reason. So therefore, believe it or not, it's cars. Cars out of that group would be least affected by a strong wind. Is that okay? Yeah. It's not as easy as easy it looks to answer that one because what you got caught with is with the, one of the the biggest reasons why most people would get questions wrong. Believe it or not, on these tests, they read the question too fast. I even did it myself, and that shows you, doesn't it? If I, if I can do it, so can anyone. So be careful. In fact, I suppose the best tip I could give you is read a question twice. And, and you know what? If the question's too easy and you think, oh, I got this, read it twice because it's probably not, you've, it's probably, you've probably missed some. That's why it sounds easy, okay? That's a top tip for you now. Read the question twice if it's easy, if you think it's easy. This is the smart motorway. Um, Okay, so it's basically got a red X on everything. What does red mean? Can't they? Yeah, red is stop. It says red just means stop. It means nothing else. If you see red, you, you ain't going anywhere. Already? Oh. Red means stop. Yeah. Simple as that. Okay, where should you avoid overtaking? 
Oh, the dip in the road one. Do you know the Do you know the Seven Sisters going down into yeah. Glen? Do you know that? Do you know mm -hmm. Do you know what Do you know why it's not a good idea to overtake there? The dips. Yeah. Well, basically, they call them the Seven Sisters, and what can happen is if you're here, coming down, and you're in the dip, and uh, you know nobody can see you coming this way. So the re a rare thing can happen is if you have something here and you overtake them and you come down into this part of the road, you're not, nobody's going to see you, so it could cause an accident, basically. Happy with that? So if it's a road that's got lots of dip, dips in it, it's not a good idea to, to overtake because there could be a vehicle coming the other way that you can't, you can't see because it could be inside the dip. That's fine. Okay, all right, let's have a look. So we're talking about the environment here. Um, so basically, that's uh, when they talk about the environment, it's always going to be about how to, um, you know, how not to damage it in some way or another. You know, like putting exhaust fumes into the air. So sometimes it's got going to have to do with using too much. Fuel. Yeah, it's going to be the, using too much fuel. Anything that's Anything it sounds like as if you're you're uh, going to burn too much um, energy, revving up too much, or driving your vehicle for short distances that you don't need. Well, that can cause problems too. But yeah, so to reduce the environmental harm, environmental harm just means to reduce the damage you cause to the earth or the planet. You know, by producing bad fumes or driving badly. All right. So revving up the engine too much. Yeah. Basically, you're driving it like a race car, you know, you get blown lots of fumes out the back exhaust and using too much fuel. And yep, that's the that's not going to be good for the environment, basically. Happy day. See, only using it on short journeys is also not good. See, what they say to you nowadays is if you're if you only want to drive down to the shop to pick up a pint of milk or whatever, guess what? You should walk. That's what they say. Not, not short journeys. So short journeys is is not necessary. You should use your legs. <laughs> but you've been working all day. You kind of want to jump into your car and just pop down, don't you? All right, let's see what else we got. What should you do if your vehicle ca catches fire driving through a tunnel? God forbid. Well, most people is going to park it up and run like hell. <laughs> so what does it tell you that you should do here? Now you went for a good answer, pull up and then walk to the emergency telephone. But you see that there's the problem with that question. It says walk. I know that I wouldn't be walking anywhere if I got a fire in my car. Would you be walking, do you think? Nah, you wouldn't be walking, my mate. You'd be running like hell. You'd be like Usain Bolt. So you would. Um, so... One of the answers it gives here, and the correct answer is to try and drive it out if the if it's safe to do so. Obviously, it doesn't mean your car's like flames belting out of it. It's got a bit of smoke or something. So it's a kind of a silly question. To be, to, you know, people don't think they would drive the car if it's on fire, do they? So just try to remember that one for me. I take a wee note of it. Uh, if your car catches fire in a tunnel, you have to try and drive it out if, if possible. All right, take a wee note of that because that's a. That's a crazy question, but I kind of know what they mean. They don't want you to start a fire inside the tunnel and cause people, other people to, you know, have problems. And yeah, so I kind of get it, but it's not, doesn't look logical of an answer to me. I think we could word it a little bit better than that. That's fine. Alrighty, let me see what we got. What should you do if you can see clearly behind when you're reversing? 
So it says, what should you do if you can't, if you can't see clearly behind? So I'm just reading it twice there. You can see it says, can't. Now, if you can't um, see that, yeah, that's it, isn't it? I'm just thinking, like, it says ask some guy, but sometimes no one's ever going to be there. That's why I was like. I hear um, you. Yeah, but what about, what about, we, we talked about this before, and, and yes, you're right. Um, it's um, it's not giving you that option to make a decision about that. But the best answer is, the best answer is ask someone to guide you, you see. Because of, yeah, why not? If someone's there, get them to guide you. But it doesn't say there's nobody there or anything. So if they had said, if they had turned around and said, you get, you're get you about to reverse a car, you can't see it, and there's nobody, but there's nobody there, there's nobody about, and you can't see anything. Well, you, you're going to have to get out and check yourself, then get back in again. Because if you can't see clearly behind you, you can't reverse. It's as simple as that. And the same you can't. So the question says you can't see clearly behind you. Guess what? You can't reverse until you can. So the only bit, the only answer that's good enough there is ask someone to help you. Because the side mirror might not do it, you see. And we didn't even say what side mirror. It didn't say right side mirror, left side mirror. So had it said something like you can't see clearly behind you to the left or something like that, um, what could you help? What can you use to help you? You know, but it didn't say that. It said specifically, you cannot see. You can't see clearly behind. So it's just a reading of the question a wee bit more, Dylan. Just try to look at them and and just read the question twice and and think to yourself, what does it actually say here? Um, yeah. Because you can you can see it's dead easy to read the question too fast and get the wrong answer because of that. So that's that's mostly what I can. That's mostly what I find with these questions here. It's not so much you don't know the answer to them, it's the way they word them. You gotta remember that. That's what the problem here is with these questions. It's the way they word them. They're uh, they can be worded really silly, if you ask me, but but anyway, that's their test, so we have to pass it. There are rules. 27. Then let's see what we got here. Okay, what should you do when you park at night on a road that has 40 miles per hour speed? So once you see the 40 miles an hour speed, right, you know that it's not a built up area. You know that's no street lights, correct? Yeah. You know that's not where people live normally. It's like a country road, maybe with like a few houses or something, right? Now, the answer you've given there, park and face it, park facing the traffic, I don't think that's a good answer because. We talked about this um, the last time um, about on a one-way system. If you park, if this is a normal road, and you park facing the traffic, that means you're going to be parking. They won't be able to see your red reflector lights on the back of the car. So that's not a good answer. You can't park facing traffic. But the better answer, because it's not the place where people live, and you're in a very dark road, there's no street lights. Yeah, because there's no street lights. You because you never get street lights uh, in a 40 road, like in the country roads, do you? Oh. No, they ain't got street lights. They've only got street lights in a 30 miles an hour road. So you're not going to get street lights um, on a 40 road normally. Now you do sometimes, uh, you know, but but generally speaking, you don't. So leave the parking lights on if there's no street lights. There'll be small lights. They won't run your battery down. That's one of the reasons why people don't answer that question. They think they'll run the battery down. Is that what you were thinking? Yeah. Yeah. They don't, they're only small lights. You can leave them on for a week and they'll be all right. Well, maybe not a week, but you know what I mean? More than a couple, more than a day would do. More, more than one night for sure. Now, this one, you ready to go? Yeah, yeah. Okay, my mate, let's have a look at this one. Now, this one's got lots of people in them, right? Now, this is what I want you to try for me. I want you to try to think about this when you look at the question, okay? This is more about questions for you now, I think. You need to just try to look at the question and try and work out the answer by looking at the question. 
Now, let's, this is a good example of what we can do here. Now, let's have a look at this. It says, which sign means there may be people walking along the road? Now, let's look at this bit first, along the road. It says people, so that's more than one. But it says walking along the road, which is something that I can see very clearly here. Now, without even looking at the correct answers, I'm going to look at this, uh, the questions, possible answers. Now, we know, first of all, that it says people. It doesn't say anything about bicycles, so we'll take that out. It doesn't say no, and we'll take that out, because that's a no. That says no people. The question asks you, which sign means or tells you that there may be people walking along the road? Now, this guy here, he's walking across the road. See, look at the direction he's walking. And he's only one person. He's not people. It's only one person. But that, that's not necessarily going to help you all the way. But what will help you is the fact that he's walking across the road. He's not walking towards you. He's not, he's not walking like this way. This way, these, these people are walking towards you. You see, they're walking along the road. They're not walking across the road, are they? No. And that's how you can work this stuff out. If you look at this stuff, you can work it out sometimes. If the rest of it's not doing it for you and you don't know the answer to the question, then have a think about it. Have a think about the question again. Have a think how they asked the question. Look for the key words. And you'll get the answer better that way sometimes. I'm giving you a sore head tonight uh, with all these questions, uh, Dylan. <laughs> oh, it's good for me. It's good for me. Oh, they're tough questions, mate. So don't be too disappointed in yourself. Um, I showed you exactly what I did at the beginning of this uh, session. I, I marked the test the hardest possible questions. You see me doing it. So if I'd marked it the easiest questions, guess what? You probably would pass the test at this stage. Just be aware of that. But that's not going to help you when you're with me. We need to get these sort of questions done, don't we? Yeah. Because guess what? You could be unlucky and you could get some of these questions on your test. And guess what? You're going to struggle then. Because it's not a lot. You're only allowed to you get seven wrong. Um, so we've got to be careful. So there's quite a lot of these ones here. There's, uh, well, more than 50% of these ones are the hardest questions. But guess what? They all came up in this test. Yeah. Go ahead. That's up. Yes, my man. Let's have a look at the next one. Number 32. So wheel spin. Well, well, wheel spin occurs when you you accelerate too hard, or if you're in first gear, maybe, or second gear, and you're trying to move off on an icy road or a muddy road. Now, the secret to this one, again, is looking at first of all the question, wheel spin. And AC road. I could have said wheel spin, muddy road, or snow. Now, how can you avoid? The word avoid means you don't want it to happen. How do you not want it to happen? How can you make it not happen? That's what avoid means here in this uh, in this sentence. So you don't want it to happen. So you, the word avoid means that. Now, I understand what you meant when you said break gently and repeatedly, by the way. I understand that, but you meant because you were thinking about something that you can do sometimes if a car skids, but it's not 100% correct. But I can understand why you were you, you you thought it might have been that one. So it's asking you, how can you avoid wheel spin, which is always about taking off. It's always about starting off. Wheel spin means you're you're starting off, or in, the, in this test anyway, at this level of your driving ability. It can occur other times, but it's always referring in this test that you do to moving off. Now, if you take off in first gear and you accelerate too hard, you could actually cause the car to, to the wheels to spin, can't you? Yeah. I've seen I'm sure you've seen people doing that in your lifetime, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, showing off a bit, basically. Taking off and making the tires burn a bit in a car park or something. That's what's happening there. That's why that's doing that, because they're... They've got it in first gear and they're they're accelerating too hard and bringing the clutch up quick. And guess what? That's what happens. 
So if you want to not do that, in other words, if you want to avoid doing that, you, you won't want to do you won't want to move off of first gear. You want to go drive slowly and you want to be in the highest gear that you could possibly be in. I don't think you're going to get past uh, going any higher than second or third. You know, second probably is about what you would be talking about, not first gear, second gear. If you're moving off on a slippy road, especially, okay. Just remember what the, how do you avoid how do you avoid wheel spin? You don't want to do it. There you therefore you don't go fast. You're not gonna you're gonna go slow, and the word slow is in the in this answer, and it's also got high gear. High gear being two, three, four, not first gear. First gear is low gear. Okay, my man. Is that clear enough for you? Yeah. Happy days. Okay, let's see what we got here. When should you use right hand lane of a three lane dual carriageway? Okay, dual carriageway basically is a one way system, isn't it? You're driving up one way system with three lanes. Now, it's got yeah. you here because it's not the same as a motorway. You see, you're thinking like a motorway here. Because you see, in a motorway, you can't turn right off a motorway. That's what caught you here. You see, three lanes, and you're thinking motorway, right? So let me see. There is, we'll just draw the lanes on the dual cars before you. See, this is the bit. This is the bit that can catches people on. If you don't, you got to remember that motorways and dual carriages are different. You see, on a dual carriage, if you look at Trooper's Lane, if you're driving out a carry, you go onto a dual carriage, but you can turn right to go up to Trooper's Lane here, can't you? See? Yeah. You can go. You can go right to go to Trooper's Lane. So that if there, if there was three lanes, then and you know that you have to leave the dual carriageway, well, you'll always leave up the dual carriageway on the right lane. You know, if you're going to leave it before you get to the end of it, I mean, you may get a chance to go on the left, but very rare. It's mostly the right. They asked you in this test anyway. Where on a motorway, if you're leaving the motorway before you get to the end of it, you normally you you can only leave on the left side. Using the slip road, remember with the one with the green studs on it. You can only leave a motorway on the left side. But on a dual carriageway, you can leave on the right side. So the right lane, we talked about this earlier. What lane would you be in if you're driving at 70 miles along on along on the dual carriageway and there's nobody on it? In. You're gonna be in number one, aren't you? Yep. What's what's lane two and three used for? Overtaken. Overtaken only, yeah, normally, but in a dual carriageway, overtaken and turn around. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. That's it, my man. You know what I'm saying? So just try to remember the difference between a dual carriageway and a motorway. First of all, just remember about what we said the left lane is where you should drive. Unless, of course, you're wanting to overtake people. But if you're doing 70 miles an hour, six o'clock in the morning, and everybody's away home and you're on your own, doesn't matter, you're still meant to be in the left lane. You see, most people think they're called the fast lanes. Would you would you remember that? Somebody says that sometimes? The fast lane. Yeah? There's no such thing. They're not called the fast lane. People call them the fast lane because they drive fast in them sometimes because they're overtaken. But they're not called the fast lane. They're, they're, you're not find that written anywhere. They're the overtaken lanes. That's what they are. And on a dual carriage, maybe because you can leave like the troopers lane and go right, the right lane is used for turning right and overtaking. You're going to be some knowledge now with road traffic, eh? You'll be like a highway code guru by the time we're finished. <laughs> All right, my man, here we go. Okay, 35. You stop on the hard shoulder of a motorway. Okay, so that's basically the area where you, you, you break down. You're on the left side, just on the left lane. Where's the best place to wait? Well, here's a bit of good news for you, right? You've learned something sport important here. And especially when you, as you get older and you have family and all the rest, of it, and uh, you go out driving around the world, whatever. If you ever break down on a motorway, all right, you make sure you don't stand or on that place where you broke down. Now you must use the, the telephone if you're close by to get help. 
there's numbers on them, you, and you're mad to. You, you can't fix a car yourself. It's against the law. If you break down the motorway, you've got to use that telephone, or you've got to contact the police so that they'll let the highway services know. But here's the bad news, right? I, I work with lorries for about 20 years, teaching lorries and all over the place. What do lorry drivers sometimes do if they've been driving too long? They have, a, they have a little sleep. They call it a micro sleep. And the hard shoulder on the left side. It's famous for them to come in there by mistake. You don't want to be standing there. <laughs> All righty. On motorways, you don't want to be standing in the hard shoulder for too long. You use a telephone, get all your family up onto the grass verge. There's a grass verge usually. Get up there and then just wait there until the help comes. Don't, don't stay down beside the car. Or you get one of those lorry drivers who's done uh, too long, maybe in the, getting a bit sleepy on it, just like you are now half asleep because you've been working all day. <laughs> so yeah, your eyes start to go and you don't even realize it, don't you? That's called a micro sleep and driving. So, I mean, if you ever felt like the way you feel now, for example, you wouldn't want to drive. Trust me, you'd want to pull over. You want to get some coffee down your neck, stick a couple of those uh, red bulls in you. Mm. <laughs> yeah, go for a walk. I'm, I, I teach driving uh, in lorries. I, I've been, I've drove conv in convoys all over myself, uh, all over the world. So yeah, you get that micro sleep situation happens. It's happened to me a couple of times. So yeah, try to remember that. But I'm t the reason why I'm telling you the story is so that you remember it better. Because if you're standing there, if that question comes up again, don't stand on the dual carriageway. Get get up onto the the verge or the road, or well away from the carriageway is the, the word is they use here. But there's usually a grass verge. Happy enough now? You know this one. Yeah. Now, you made a little mistake here, and, um, and you weren't, weren't far wrong, actually. But, yeah, you see this little this white dot here? This means that you're going to go along a little bit, and then you're going to turn. See? Yep. If, it yep. hadn't, if it hadn't had this bit, then it would mean turn left straight away. Leave the motorway. Yep. But it says here, look, leave the motorway at the next exit. Uh, if I wanted you to change lanes, it would look like that. So he's telling you to move to the left lane or telling you to move to the right lane. It didn't do that. It's telling you to go that way, straight left. In other words, you're leaving. But yeah. along, along a little bit, then you're leaving. That's what that represents. About, probably about 20 meters or 30 meters of driving, maybe more. Okay, what we got here then? What circumstances means that you have to let the, the driving people know What's going on? Basically, if you find that you're you're uh, got a problem with your health, you're legally when you take your provisional license um, and you signed it to, to get your provisional, you 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 tick the box to say that you were healthy, right? So if you get sick and you have an accident and you haven't told them, uh, then you're you're basically in deep doo doo. Yeah, so like it's eyesight problems or heart problems or blood pressure or something like that. If the doctor says, "Guess what? You're you're passing out," <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You don't you don't have a driving anymore. Well, that's it. You don't be driving anymore until they, you get fixed. So that's it. anything that affects your health, you've got to let them know. Already. Oh, this is the one that we talked about at the beginning of the lesson. And after I seen you got it wrong, the puffing crossing, right? Yeah. See, what follows, what color follows the green signal? That's on the way up, isn't it? Because mm -hmm. green's on its own. Then after that comes amber and then red. So the puffing cross is just an ordinary set of traffic lights. Green, yeah. amber, red. Yeah, okay. 42. Uh, excuse me. Yeah, okay, my man. Um, you're, we're nearly finished. Another 10 minutes, I'll say. Okay, so what may help to deter a thief? Deter basically means what will what may what may stop uh, a thief from stealing your car? Well, you can put them off a little bit by doing different things, obviously. Now, this word etching, have you ever heard it before? This word here. Etching the registration number on the windows. Do you know what that is? That's just the same as like a, you know, like if you got a bracelet and you, you got your name put on it, like a, you, 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 they call that engraving, right? Or get it put onto your bracelet or your watch or something, your name. Yeah. Well, all that all that is is etching is the same, except it's putting it head on glass. So if someone's going to steal a very fancy car, um, guess what? They won't steal a car that's got the number plate scratched into the glass. 
if it's all over the car. It's like too much hassle for them, right? They've got to change all the windows in the whole car then, every single window. So they're not going to take that car. They're going to take someone who hasn't got that done to their car. And that's called etching. It's the same as scratching the, the number plate onto it, except it's done professionally. You, you understand what it means, okay? Yeah. Think, of, think about the same as an, uh, a tattoo you've got there, for example, or engraving something onto a bracelet. It's, uh, that's what it means. It's just etching. It's just scratching it onto it, except it's, uh, it's going to be visible for everybody to see. Yeah, it's like tattooing your car. That's a good way for you to remember it, seeing you got tattoos there. You'll remember it better then. All right, it's like putting something on a glass at the basically it's uh, personalizing the car. I'll be this. That will help you. Remember, I call them memory triggers, Dylan. All right. See anything that you can attach to a question? Like I've been joking a bit about different wee things there, but that's what I call memory triggers. Now, when you when you go to do tests, you try to use that technique I've just shown you. You attach something to it. Like when you see the word etching, think about your tattoos and then think about scratching stuff on the glass and you think yeah i remember that's a question of course somebody won't steal the car because it's got the number plate scratched on it all right next one 43 turning right at the crossroads now we know crossroads is just the same as the a wee bit like what we did earlier the box junction that's like that that's what the crossroads looks like and you're turning right so you're you're here and you want to go this way and there's another guy coming this way, he wants to do the same. All right, quite dangerous because we can't trust this person. All right, we can't trust them because you can't see what's behind them. So you better let them turn first. Let them get into your road. And that's a good tip for you, so well for when you're doing your driving test. Do you understand, you understand it okay? Yeah. All right, so you've got to just understand that the uh, the techniques are all basically the same as what you do in your test then, all right? Yeah. Okay, so this is a sign that normally is to do with um, with parking. See that? That's the red That's the red one, isn't it? Yeah. The, the red circle with the, the line through it, which basically means you're not allowed to park. So what, what you went for is you thought it was a national speed limit applied sign because they look very similar because there's no color in it. And that's what most people would think when they see this sign. They go for the wrong one. They go for the, um, they think it's a national speed limit applied sign because it's got no color in it. And uh, yeah, but because it said zone ends, once you see it, the word zone, zone ends, well, you know it's going to do with, going to be doing something to do with parking. All right, parking zone. So that's, that's going to let you know then that it's going to give you a little bit of an idea that it's going to be something to do with parking because guess what? They wouldn't have used the word zone either. And it's it's the kind of thing you'd see the odd, the odd time um, in a, a place where there's been a lot of parking restriction. You come along and then you get this sign that basically means that's finished. That's the end of that. So you're not far away there because it looks like it looks like it's definitely the end of something. But guess what? It's to do with parking, nothing to do with driving, nothing to do with speed limits. All right. Let me know when you've taken down the wee notes for it, man. Yeah, just really about shown ends and end off restriction parking. Yeah, happy days. It's just the, it looks very like the national speed limit applied sign, and that's why this is it's on the list of the hardest one of the hardest questions you can be asked. Because most students will look at it and think straight away it's to do with speeding or something, you know, to do speed limits. Okay, so let's first of all have a look at the uh, the question. So what does the road marking mean? So obviously it's talking about the center line. Now I want to show you something here that you can work this out yourself. And it's quite a good wee tip for you as you go through your driving career. Um, if you ever drive on roads that you don't know, the, the it's a kind of the language of the road, really, right? If you look, there's a white, the, the white dot line in the middle of the road here, the, the gap between the, the two white lines. See, see that gap? Mm -hmm. Now, the more paint there is on the road, in other words, the more, the less that that gap is, it means the more danger there is. Now, the reason why that's quite a, a hazard line is because there's a bend coming up, see? So what they've done is they've put a bit more paint on the road, and that's how you should remember it. It's for a memory trigger, Trying to remember the more paint that's on the road, the more danger is on the road. 
The more paint on the road, the more dangers on the road. That's a memory trigger. So that means because you're coming up here and it's not a normal road mark and there's more white paint on it, then guess what? You're going to come across a hazard of some type. And that's giving you the heads up so that you don't get surprised by it. So I'll just give you a little on top of this. We're nearly finished, but I'll just squeeze this one a wee bit out for you. I want, I want you to understand this one. So just say then, this was a, a solid white line coming along this road then, like this. And it just wasn't a single dotted line anymore. It was now become a solid white line. What does that actually mean? What does that mean? If it's two solid white lines? No overtaker. Correct. And the reason why? Because there's more paint on the road, there's more danger on the road. You see? That's how that works. The more paint there is, the more danger. So if it's asking you questions about uh, something, try to look at the uh, look at the road mark to see how much uh, paint there is. You know, that's the same as with the yellow lines, right? You know, like when you, you, you there's a parking restriction, there's a, like a, a yellow dotted line. Then sometimes there's a full thick yellow line. So the one that's got the more paint is the more restriction. The more, you know, the more danger, the more parking restriction. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. The more paint, the more danger, right? Okay, let's have a look at 47. And so this is another one to do with parking and lights. Okay, so we talked earlier about this one, right? When I you said about the 40 miles an hour limit, right? The 40 miles an hour limit, Matt, where were you? Whereabouts were you? Straight on my straight. No, a four, f f it was a 40 miles an hour speed limit. Whereabouts was the road? Was it being a built up area or would it be in a country road, for example? Country road. Okay, so it's in a country road, right? So what is there? What is it? What do we? What do you not have in the country roads? Parking or lights? Street lights. So uh, what's this? Yeah, exactly. So, so would the speed limit be thirty or would it be more than thirty normally? Thirty. Now it's in the country road, Dylan, and there's no street lights. So is the speed limit going to be thirty or is it going to be more than thirty? More than thirty. It's going know. to be more. Yeah, it's going to be more than thirty. You know, because when you go on the country roads, the, the speed limit goes higher when there's no street lights because there's no people about. It's not yeah. a place. It's not. It's not a place where people live. Where people live, the speed limit's thirty, but where people don't live, the speed limit is higher. So country roads, the speed limit's normally higher, and also there's no street lights. Now this is why they've asked you this question, and this is why it's a difficult question. They haven't asked you a straight up question. What they've done is they've said something like this, right? You've parked on the road at night. So you've parked your car at night. When must you use your parking lights? Now you know you can't, you must use your parking lights if you're not in a built up area or where people live. Is that you know that because we've done that earlier. Mm -hmm. So all you have to remember for me then is it's to do with the speed limit. You see? Now, what is they've used the words when the speed limit exceeds? Well, what it basically means by that is. It's when it's greater, when there's when it's more than 30. You just use the word exceeds there. But it just means when the speed limit is more than 30. Now, just watch the way they've worded the question. This is what this is why this is a hard question, is because the way they've worded it catches people out. You've got to read it and think about it. You park the road at night. When must you your parking lights? Now you you know the answer to that. You know it's a country road. You don't you know you don't need to use them when people live there because there's street lights. Yeah. So that's why it's given you that when the speed when the speed limit exceeds 30 miles per hour. So you know that the, the lead speed limit is more than 30. It's it's a place you're going to need to put your parking lights on. Because mm -hmm. you know you're not in a built-up area anymore. So when must you use your parking lights? When the speed limit's more than 30, because you know you're not in a built-up area anymore. All right, my man. Yeah. Not an easy question, by the way. Difficult question. But guess what? That's why we're here. We'll learn the difficult ones tonight. All right. This the little videos. What the what have we got here? Why is it dangerous to overtake near a junction? Well, quite simply, is because somebody else might uh, be coming out and you don't see them. So you would never overtake on dips. We covered that earlier on dips in the road. You would never overtake on a corner or a bend that you can't see. Very well then. 
You would never overtake where there's two white lines in the road, as we've talked about. But you would definitely never overtake when you come up to a road on the left or right of you. Because someone could come out just as you're overtaken. And they use the word emerge. Now, I think that's probably thrown you a bit there because of the way they've worded that. A driver waiting to come out. Just remember, if you want to write down for me, the word emerge means come out. Emerge equals come out. Write that down at junctions. Is that an emerge to? Yeah, just emerge equals the word, the word emerge equals come out of a junction. Emerge equals come out of a junction. And that'll help you remember what, what, what it means, my mate. Okay. Is that all right? Okay. Yeah. Let's go 49 now. So what is the speed limit on the road for the car towing the caravan? Okay, so... Um, you know that uh, we, we talked about the caravan, the trailer. It's the same as the trailer. So, so it's yeah, so it's we, yeah, well, it's motorways, motorway 70 for a normal car. So, what is it for a trailer? Okay. On a motorway 70 for a normal car, so it's 10 less, right? So, yeah, yep. Yeah. On a dual carriageway, what would it be then? Okay. It's no the same, same as a motorway because the top, oh, yes. It's 10 less, right? 10 less. So, Six. yeah, so it's 10 less in the motorway, 10 less in the dual carriageway. And now we know the fastest you can go on a country road when they've got that white circle with a black line is 60. That's the fastest you can go on the country roads when they have that sign. So it's 10 less than that. That's why you got 50. So remember, motorway. A motorway is... Uh, just do this for you, so you can take it over. So a motorway, it's 70. A dual carriageway, is 70. An ordinary road, that's the one with the, the, the um, black line, white circle with the black line, is 60. And guess what? When you have a trailer or a caravan, it's minus 10. So motorway is 60. Dual carriageway is 60. And an ordinary road then becomes 50. And that's what they ask you. What is the speed limit for the car towing the caravan? Now this road, if you look at it, it's not a motorway, is it? It's not a dual carriageway. It's just an ordinary country road. I'm sure your head's sore now. <laughs> if, it wasn't sore, if it wasn't sore when you started, it's probably sore now, my man. Okay, no. well, well done anyway. It was a tough, tough session for you, but we'll have to try to push you as hard as I can now. Try and get you up for this test. What What's the actual date of your test again, Dylan? Next Thursday. Next week. Thursday. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna see you early on next week. Then um, I'm gonna also send you this link to Aaron with this lesson that we've done tonight because the, these are the hardest questions that you could possibly get in this session, of course. And then you can go through them and listen to them yourself and my explanations to you, um, and that will help you prepare. Um, okay, so are you happy with that? Yeah. Unless you have a private email address, you want me to send it to you so you can have it on your phone or something for your own personal studying. If you, um, have, your, if you have your own email address, then just send me it. Send me it uh, tonight if you can or tomorrow. Just send me yeah. the, just send me an email to my driving school and just put your name on it and uh, and ask me to ask me to send you the link to um to watch this back so you can use it for your training purposes. But I want yeah. I, what I want you to do for me is I want you to study this tape. Right. And every, every every one of these questions that I've asked you tonight and explained it to you, I want you to know the answer to. Already, yeah. That, no that's your that's your challenge. All right. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Well done. All the best. I I'll, uh, I'll look forward to seeing you. I'll, and I'll send you a, a, an email for the next lesson. It'll be early on. It'll probably Monday or Tuesday. Okay. Yeah. No problem. Thank you. All right. All right, my man. All the best.